Let's see what we're test driving today. Earth Defense Force 2 Invaders from Planet Space for the PS Vita. Earth Defense Force 2 Invaders from Planet Space was released on December 11, 2014 in Japan and a year later in North America on December 8, 2015. It was developed by Sandlot, who at this point had already released four Earth Defense Force games on various home consoles. So how does this game hold up as a shooter? Well, let's check it out. Earth Defense Force 2 for the Vita is a remake of Global Defense Force, which was released for the PlayStation 2 in 2005, and is the second game in the Earth Defense Force series. We start with a very brief recap of the first Earth Defense Force game, released on the PlayStation 2 in 2003. The story is textbook campy sci-fi movie schlock. A giant saucer mothership appears over major cities, aliens attack with giant bugs, and humans band together to save the day. Well, in the aftermath, the Earth Defense Force is established to protect against any future attacks. Fast forward two years while well, all is quiet until giant bugs are sighted in London. We bring you this special report. The Buggernauts have reappeared and have already destroyed several cities across the globe. They're giant bugs! Run! Ah! Help! No status! It's the bugs! They're back! I thought they'd all been The objective of every mission is pretty straightforward. Kill all the enemies in the area. There's a nice radar display in the top right corner of the screen to show you where to find your targets. Red dots are enemies, giant ants in this level, and the white dots are civilians that are in danger. Now, I would never noticed any advantage or disadvantage to saving the civilians, but I still tried my best to save them if I could. To include a mission, all you need to do is make sure there are no more red dots on the radar. Choose your weapons. Air Raiders can equip up to three of them. Before each mission, you can choose one of three different character types to play. Infantry, Pale Wing, and the Air Raider. First, let's look at the infantry. He's the brute force workhorse of the three. His first weapon is a standard machine gun. You have unlimited ammo, but once a clip is empty, there's a slight wait to reload. There's a counter in the bottom right corner to show you how much ammo is left before needing to reload. We have an update on the underground nests. It should be noted that the surrounding buildings are not immune to weapon fire. This can be used to your advantage to take out bugs swarming on or around those structures. The secondary weapon for the infantry is the rocket launcher. The ammo clip is very small, but each rocket sure does do an immense amount of damage. Next we have the pale wing. The first noticeable difference is that the pale wing can fly for a short period of time. The purple meter on the right decreases as you fly around, and once it's empty, your flying time is done until it recharges. That same meter is used for the secondary weapon, which is a powerful laser blast. It's destructive, but as with the flying, you have to wait for a recharge to fire after the meter depletes. The Pale Wing's other weapon option is a laser burst. I felt like the range was rather short, but it also seemed to hit multiple targets, which helped a lot when swarmed. The last character type is the Air Raider. He is described as more of a support character, especially when playing multiplayer. He can eventually call in airstrikes for massive damage. I never saw any of this since there is no tutorial and I actually could not figure out how to do anything when trying to play a level as the Air Raider. At the beginning of some levels, there are vehicles that the infantry and the Air Raider can jump in and use. One of the vehicles is the tank. It's a little clunky, but the weapon packs a giant punch. One well-placed shot can send bugs flying through the air. Unfortunately, I found myself too easily swarmed by ants every time I tried to use it. 
Another vehicle available is the hover bike. It has a machine gun for its weapon allowing you to easily mow down a group of bugs. The handling is very finicky and it accelerates almost too fast. I felt it was never worth the effort to try and drive one, which made me always pass the bike when I saw one. The true star of the game is the endless hordes of 1950s style sci-fi monsters that you are tasked with destroying. Just to name a few, there are giant ants, which later start to shoot poison and fly. Giant spiders leap around and spit webs. Little flying saucers rain laser blasts down upon the cities. And towering four-legged saucers stomp around blasting everything in sight. Overall, Earth Defense Force 2 Invaders from Planet Space is an enjoyable action shooter. Whether you're a fan of the sci-fi movies it pays homage to, or you're just looking for a fun time smashing giant bugs, it deserves at least a little playthrough. But what do I know? I'm just a driver. Test drive it yourself.